I asked Kevin if I could be in this intro and he said no, so... This is my video. Okay. Director Mickey is like, if you can see what's behind me, like behind the scenes, it's like <laughs> helicopter mom. Good afternoon. By popular request, people have asked me to make a video on the finances of how much a doctor makes. I've been uh, getting some very flattering comments about how rich I am, but that is a little bit far away from the truth as a resident. I would divide a physician's money-making journey into three major sections. Phase one is school, which includes undergrad and medical school, which will take eight years. Phase two is the training portion, which includes residency and fellowship that can take anywhere between three to 10 more years. And then phase three will be the attending life, AKA get that bread life, where you actually make the money a physician is supposed to make. Let's get straight into phase one school aka the crippling snowball of student debt the timeline of making money as a doctor before that happens you have to do four years of undergrad then four years of medical school at this point not only are you not making money you also have to pay tuition and tuition from undergrad and medical school can range anywhere from you know twenty thousand us dollars to eighty thousand dollars a year and at the same time you still need money to pay off your rent the food that you eat and any other financial expenses. So at the end of the day, you have a large amount of debt, a large amount of loans that you have to take. Depending on how you know your family is able to support you through undergrad and medical school, that amount can change. But based on the average amount of debt a doctor has at the end of medical school, right now the number is around 220,000 US dollars. Fortunately, in my situation, um, my medical school wasn't that expensive. My parents helped pay some of the expenses for room and board during medical school. So my loan is, you know, a little bit more than $100,000. $100,000, you know, if you think about, oh, a doctor in the future may make $400,000, $500,000, you may think it's not a big deal, but for a resident, for someone who's not making that much money, we have to consider that burden. And so some people who started off only having $200,000 of debt after medical school, but didn't worry about it during residency, it can even balloon up to, you know, half a million dollars of debt. Phase two, the training portion. So how much do residents get paid during residency and fellowship? I'm gonna put up some of the pay scales for the residency programs kind of on average. And depending on kind of where you live in the country, this number can be a little bit higher or can be a little bit lower, but it's supposed to be adjusted to the cost of living. As an intern, I made about $60,000. And then as an R2 right now, second year resident, that number jumped about 5%. So there's two things that determine how much money you get more. Every year as a more senior resident, you get about a two or 3% increase in your salary. And also every year you get about potentially a 2% raise based on the inflation and, you know, just how much more things cost. Put into perspective, you know, $60,000 is, you know, a decent starting salary for many jobs. But if you work out the, the dollars per hour money that you make as a resident, we often work 80 hours a week and we don't get that much time off. So if you do the math, works out to about 15 or $16 an hour for $60,000. And even if you're a senior resident and you're making, you know, $75,000, that number really only goes up to $20 an hour, which is very similar to the pay of, you know, people working minimum wage jobs. In regards to that, being a resident, you're really getting paid quite minimally. So in summary, in this phase two, you made between 50 and 70K for three to 10 years in which you're so poor, you probably are eating instant ramen and mostly cafeteria food from the hospital and mostly unable to contribute to your student loans. That means your crippling student debt now has snowballed into a larger amount. Give you an example of how scary this compounded interest is. Let's assume that number one, you have $200,000 in student debt. Number two, your student loan interest rate is 6%. Number three, you made no payments to your student loans during your residency. Your residency program was five years long. As you can see from this table, the first year you accumulate $12,000 of interest and every year after that, the interest is more because of the compounded numbers. At the end of five years, your student debt now is at $267,000, which is a 33.5% increase from when you started the training. Phase three, get that bread. It's finally time to make the money that all the aunts, uncles, and gold diggers think you make. So once you're done with undergrad, medical school, and residency and fellowship, 
you get to be an attending physician, which means that you can practice independently and by yourself and you, you are like the boss doctor, you make all the final decisions. At that point, depending on what specialty you are, you make anywhere between $200,000 and potentially you know, $600,000 or more. And your hours are probably a little bit better, maybe working full time, maybe a little bit less, some people a little bit more. So here's a chart of the average salaries in all different specialties in 2020. As you can see, the lowest paying specialties are in primary care and pediatrics, while the highest paying specialties are the surgical subspecialties. We have to remember that these surgical subspecialties have the longest time in training and are also most competitive to get into residency for. The way the compensation for a physician is calculated is through what's called RVUs or relative value units. Basically every procedure and every visit has a billing code that is worth a certain number of dollars. Based on the specialty, different visits have different costs, which ultimately affects this physician's compensation. Being a doctor, you're definitely not going to be, you know, poor, poor, but financially, you know, you're going to be relatively stable, but it's not like you're going to be a instant rich person. There is this analogy of comparing a physician income over time versus someone who became a UPS driver after high school. The quickest take home point from that calculation is that it takes about 18 years for a doctor after high school to equal the lifetime earnings of a UPS driver working full time. So let's say you're, you know, 18, 20 years old when you're done with high school. It takes until you're probably 40 years old before you break even. And that's due to a couple reasons. As I said before, you're going to be in training for the first like 10 years of that. Um, and you're going to be net negative for a long time in paying off loans. And it's going to take you a long time before you, you know, catch up on that curve. If you're really, you know, considering becoming a doctor and money is a big thing, you know, it's going to take you a while before you actually, you know, see the money or as you, there's certainly other professions if you really just care about money to do that. You know, becoming a doctor is a super long, long path. You know, it's not like you become a doctor overnight and if you're only motivated by money, you're definitely going to burn out hurtling over any of the hundreds of tests and things you have to do before you become a full doctor. Money is, you know, an important factor in driving a lot of our decisions. And, you know, as a resident right now, I am definitely not rich and I'm certainly not poor or anything like that but you know I'm still net negative this is kind of a you know all this education is an investment so that I can be a, a good physician and you know in the long run I hope to be very financially stable but it just takes a long road for you to get there I hope to do a few more videos like this in the future so if you have any suggestions or other questions that you want me to answer drop a comment below and then give a thumbs up. I'm doing a wonderful like a YouTuber promotion and uh, please like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting things about Mickey and my life.